When you're looking to get the most out of your panel, you need the next generation capabilities that come from the 25 years of thinking inside the box since the GNS series launched in 1998. The GTN 750XI and the GTN 650XI are our premier all-in-one GPS, NAV, COM, MFDs. They're easy to use and offer functionality unimaginable even a few years ago. We'll mostly be working off the GTN 750XI. If you can operate one, you can operate the other seamlessly. In your panel, the GTN 750XI will have the same bezel height as a GNS 530 plus the GMA 340 audio panel. The GTN 650 will have the same height as a GNS 430. Let's take a look at why the GTN XI series sets a standard for general aviation navigation. So the other day I was down in Florida and I was going from Fort Pierce over to Tampa. And I kind of thought this is a good example of a flight and when you actually need to do airways and a flight plan. So I want to show this scenario real quick. So first I'm sitting in Fort Pierce, Florida. If I did a direct two, and we're all familiar with direct twos, and I, and I was going over to Tampa, K-T-P-A, and activate it, we could see our course line and I zoom out on the map, which is great. Now this, I notice I'm going through all this airspace. Actually with the moving map, I can touch the airspace, brings up a little button, what that is, and I can see it's restricted area 2901, surface to 14,000 feet. So when I file, there's probably a real good chance I'm not gonna get that routing. So what I did was go pull out my Garmin Pilot on my uh, phone and I put in Fort Pierce to Tampa and got routing and found the most common routes people have. So that route, let's come back here, was to Bulldog, Barn, Odell, then an airway, TT336, to an intersection to Lakeland VOR and to Tampa. So quite a lot. And if you had our older GNSs, you'd be putting everything in, big knob, little knob, and scrolling it in, and then you'd actually have to enter all the waypoints on the airway. Now with this unit, we can come here, we can start out, it knows we're at Fort Pierce, so our first intersection is Bulldog. So I can just go, which is a BLD, B-L-D-O-G, enter. Then the next one is Barn, B-A-I-R-N, enter. The next one is Odell, O-D-D-E-L, enter. And then it's to the airway, which was Tango 336. So all I have to do to enter an airway is I touch a waypoint. And any waypoint you touch on a flight plan, it brings up a menu of what do you want to do with that waypoint. So do I want to activate a leg between two points or do I want to insert a waypoint before or after? But what I want to do is load an airway. Now it gives me a selection of airways. We're actually the top one, T336. And in this case, it's funny, you can sort it alphabetically on the airways or I can turn that off and now it's just in order of the airway, sequential order. And we're getting off at this uh, Yovix. So there it is, and I press load. And it was that easy to enter the airway. Then I could put Lakeland VOR in, in Tampa and complete it. Now, there's another shortcut. Let's clear this airway. So all I'm gonna do is go menu and delete after all that work. And I'm starting with a clean slate. In this unit, I got our flight stream 510, which has Bluetooth going to the unit. So all I do is go here, touch my little connects with it, send to unit. Notice here now, it's flashing, it says the flight plan is there. There's that flight plan we just did and activate. And then I can start sequencing to the first waypoint if I want. But now you can see the whole flight plan. You can see now the way it comes up and around the airspace and comes in and then goes over to Tampa. Now we got our flight plan loaded in, let's get ready to go taxi out. So the next thing I would do is uh, come in here, I'm just zooming in on the map, and there's several ways to bring up waypoint information, but in this case, let's just touch it on the map. Because anything you highlight on the map, I touch it, 
there it is, a little waypoint button came up for Port Pierce. So that gives me a direct link to the waypoint information page where I could come here, find Fort Pierce, their elevation. I could find what approaches they have, find the runway, runway lengths, traffic patterns, but we want to do frequencies. So first thing we want to get is ATIS. So I press it, where do I want to do it? I want to listen to it now. So I'm just putting my number one active. Let's go ahead and get ground queued up, put it in standby. So we listen to ATIS. Now I could come over here Go ahead and put the uh, ground frequency in. Notice that it did do the uh, decoding on it. So I can even just look and it tells me it's Fort Pierce ground. And let's go ahead and get tower then in the uh, standby. And it's that simple. I just hit the back button and I'm back at the map. But that's simple just to grab frequencies and throw them into the uh, com. Some other big improvements that happened over the years is definitely on weather, especially on the data link weather side. So right now we're doing a sample trip. We're sitting here in Monroe, Louisiana, and we're gonna head over to uh, PDK over in, uh, in Atlanta. And I can tell there's quite a bit of stuff on the radar. It looks like some light to moderate rain up north. It looks like we're actually getting some freezing weather. So that's just overlaid on my main map. If we wanna get some more detail, we can go to the back button to the main menu and touch weather. This is all the different types of weather products we have available. You can get it from XM, so the satellite coming down. You can get it from FISB, from the ground being uplinked. We have Connext Weather, which is another satellite weather service we usually use for our international uh, trips. Then you can do storm scope, and we can display that on the screen, and we can actually be an active radar. This is actually one feature you can't have radar on a 650 because of its size. But those are all the different weather products. In this scenario, let's just take a look at XM, what we've got. So I touch Cirrus XM. There's the weather map. And I can decide what do I want to look at. So I go to menu. I always say menu is your friend. If you're looking to do something, always go to the menu key. It's been consistent with all Garmin products. We can do echo tops, cloud tops. We can do icing and it's gonna show icing conditions along the way. We can bring up turbulence, it'll show turbulence. Winds aloft is one I use all the time. I could turn lightning on on the map. So there's different things. You can select what do you want, which weather products you want. And then when you go back and you see on the map, I've got like winds aloft on. Those are like arrows shooting. So that's 20 knot winds, kind of crosswind tailwind. And that's at 12,000 feet. I've got little arrows here that'll just knock down so I can look at all altitudes and what the winds are and what they change and make decisions along that, make decisions that way. And let's also go back real quick and look at the main map. So we saw all that, I had all the uh, next rad on on the map. The other thing you can do weather-wise is just check METARs along the route. So I can pick an airport, I can highlight it, press the button down there, and I can look at weather data. So at different airports along the way, I can look, hey, winds are 290 at five, visibility nine, light rains, few clouds at 900, scattered at 1600. So it's nice to look at what's underneath some of that weather as you go along. Now we're on our trip going into Tampa. So we just got handed off to Tampa Approach Control and they said, expect the uh, ILS vectors for the ILS runway 19 left. So what we'll do in this box, and this is gonna look really familiar if you used any Garmin products, whether it's G1000 or g and it's kind of the Garmin logic. We'll go back to the home screen. We'll go to the procedure, because our approach is a procedure. So we press that, then we select approach. What approach do we wanna do? We press the approach button, 19 left. What's our transition? We know they said to expect vectors. Or if we had an initial fix, we could have gone out and selected an initial fix. Then it asks the question, do you want to load the approach or load and activate it? Since we're not on vectors yet, they're still, we're still flying direct to the airport, I would just preload the approach. If they're already vectoring me, I would go ahead and activate it because we're now in heading mode, not navigating direct to the airport. So let's go ahead and load the approach. Gives us a little disclaimer, it says okay. And then that puts us in the flight plan and we can see the approach. There's bucks, there's the uh, final approach fix. And then even here has our whole missed approach procedure. If you have a Garmin autopilot and Garmin display, it'll fly that whole missed approach procedure fully coupled. 
So let's go back, look at the map. There we are on the map, and you can see the course coming in on the 19 left, so we're basically 90 degrees to it. Over here, when we loaded the approach, it put the localizer frequency in the standby. We'll go ahead and put that into the active. What else you can do on a GTN 750 is come over here and go to chart. And the approach that we just loaded is what is queued up already on our charts. So load the approach, then come in, go to chart. Now you can brief the chart. You can look at the altitudes. And normally I'll come in here, find my minimums. And if I have a Garmin display, I'll go ahead and set my minimums for alerting. Now the next sector is all of a sudden they say, hey, turn right heading uh, 300. You go to your autopilot, you go to heading mode and you start flying that. Now we don't need to navigate direct to the airport. So now is when you wanna activate the approach. So I just go back, go procedure and activate vectors to final. And there is our course we're gonna come in and intercept for the ILS. Another one of my favorite features on the GTN is visual approaches. It basically gives you an extended center line of any runway that you're going into. And it'll also give you a three degree glide path. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I can load it just like I do a normal approach. I can go back here to procedure, select approach. Then on the approach button, it's gonna be the end is gonna be all my visual approaches. So we're gonna do the visual approach for runway one nine left. And now just like an actual approach, you can load it or you can load it and activate it. We'll go ahead and load it right now. So I can still navigate direct to the airport where we're flying there, but now we see the visual approach, basically the extended center line. You'll also see a little point out here that's three miles out. If I cross out at 1,040 feet, that would intercept with a three degree glide path to the runway. Now, once I start coming in on the visual, I can go in and just like I do a regular approach, go back here to procedure and activate approach. And at that point, now you can see it's pink and I can come and intercept that visually or I could actually come and intercept that on the autopilot. One more thing that's pretty slick with this, if you get a certain distance from the airport and it's pilot selectable, a little button will pop up. You're just flying MBFR to an airport that says visual approach and it'll just bring up the visual approaches. Let's say they switch me to runway 28 right now. I can go visual 28, activate, and now I see the pink line and what I can intercept to do the visual for runway 28. One of the biggest questions we have at the shows is on VNAV. So I wanna show a couple basic things on, the, on how I do it. So one of the things I do is set up a data field that's vertical speed required, VSR. That'll tell us how many feet per minute we need to do to make our target altitude. So now to activate or put a, a waypoint in, vertical waypoint, go to the flight plan, touch the altitude data field. I just wanna know on a normal flight, at my current speed and altitude, what do I need to do vertically to make the center of the airport? So I just touch the data field there, I push AGL, enter, it knew the field elevation of 1,087 and I save it. And it's that simple. And now it's telling me at my current altitude and ground speed, I need to do 530 feet per minute to make the middle of the airport. Now, another scenario on VNAV is they give me a crossing restriction. And I get this all the time, cross 20 miles before New Century Airport at uh, 6,000 feet. So what I can do is go down here to VNAV, touch the VNAV window, I do a long track and it's got a negative number 20 miles before enter and 6,000 feet, enter and save. Now, when we go back up there in that data field, it tells me at my current speed at 470 feet per minute, I'll make that crossing restriction. The GTN 750 also has the ability to do VNAV on descend via arrivals. Right now I have it set up. We're going into Phoenix and we are on the Eagle 6 arrival. In the flight plan, once you load the arrival, it'll automatically, all these altitudes or our crossing restrictions, automatically puts them into the flight plan. If you have a Garmin autopilot and a Garmin display, 
you're gonna be able to dial in your bottom altitude, in this case, 7,000 feet, and arm the VNAV, and it's gonna bridge and make all the crossings. If weather, terrain, and traffic are not enough on a GTN 750 or 650 Xi, we also have Smart Glide, as long as you have a compatible Garmin display. Now, Smart Glide will help you out in the event in a single engine aircraft, you have loss of power or loss of engine. You can simply reach up, press the Smart Glide button. At that point, the Glide range ring is gonna appear and it's gonna automatically set a route to the nearest airport. If you have a Garmin Autopilot, it's gonna start flying you to that nearest airport and also set the airplane up at best glide speed. What a relief taking over some of the duties while you're troubleshooting the engine. You also notice as it's coming into the airport, it'll show you what altitude you're gonna be at when you arrive. So right now, when we get over the airport, it's gonna be 2,300 feet. So that gives me an idea how I can line up for a runway, how much altitude I have to descend. It'll also put the tower frequency or Unicom frequency in the standby, so you have that immediately available. And you could also squawk 7700 from that point. Now, once we arrive at the airport, we're just gonna disconnect the autopilot and land the airplane. Those are just some of the capabilities that make the GTN XI series a powerful addition to your panel. When you put all this functionality at your fingertips, you'll wonder why you didn't upgrade sooner. Talk to a dealer near you to hear how you can equip today.